Hello, I'd like to welcome everyone to the uh, May 9th, 2019 uh, regular meeting of the Guymon City Council. Um, we do not have a preacher tonight, so I will be doing the prayer, so if you please bow your heads with me. Dear Heavenly Father, uh, we come before you tonight. Um, just wanted to say thank you for this rain that you've given us, Lord, here in Guyman. Um, thank you for always uh, blessing this uh, wonderful town. And uh, please continue to watch on over uh, the citizens here of Guyman and uh, the city council as we make the best decision for the city. In your name I pray. Amen. 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 Mr. Swagger, will you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Call this meeting to order. Item two is attendance roll call. Before that, uh, Mr. Mayor, the vice mayor wanted me to make everybody aware that uh, on his behalf, he, he apologizes, but he was chosen to give the commencement speech at the, uh, OPSU. Thank you for that. Item two, attend roll call. Egger. Egger. Oh, sorry. Here. Alvidras. Here. Swagger. Here. Living good. Here. Peterson. Hoffman. Here. Mr. Petty. Here. Mr. Wagner. Here. Item three is public comments and announcements. Any public comments or announcements? Item four is approval of the consent agenda. I make a motion that we approve the consent agenda item four. I'll second. I have a motion and a second. Edgar? Aye. Alvidris? Aye. Swager? Aye. Living good? Aye. We've got four <clears throat> ayes. Item five, presentation of proclamation declaring the week of May 12th through 18th, 2019 as National Police Week. I have the proclamation. Oh. Chief, do you have all your... <laughs> That'll be a good pick. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Ready? All right, proclamation. Whereas the Congress and the President of the United States have designated May 15th as Peace Officers Memorial Day, and the week in which May 15th falls as National Police Week, and whereas the members of the law enforcement agencies of Guyman, Texas County, and the state of Oklahoma play an essential role in safeguarding the rights and freedoms of Guyman, and whereas it is important that all citizens know and understand the duties, responsibilities, hazards, and sacrifices of their law enforcement agency, and that members of our law enforcement agency recognize their duty to serve the people by safeguarding life and property, by protecting them against violence and disorder, and by protecting the innocent against deception and the weak against oppression. And whereas the men and women of the law enforcement agencies of Guyman, Texas County, and the state of Oklahoma unceasingly provide a vital public service. I, Sean Livingood, Mayor of Guyman, Oklahoma, in the City Council, call upon citizens of Guyman to observe May 15th, 2018 as Peace Officers Memorial Day in honor of those law enforcement officers who, through their courageous deeds, have made the ultimate sacrifice and service to their community or have become disabled in the performance of duty and let us recognize and pay respect to the survivors of our, fa of our fallen heroes. Now therefore, I, Sean Livingood, Mayor of Guyman, Oklahoma, and the City Council do hereby proclaim the week of May 12th through 18th to be National Police Week.
this here too. I'm gonna put it. Back. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Huh? Item six, discussion and possible action on notice of hearing to declare property a public nuisance and order removal of trash, weeds, grass, and set a date for completion of work at the following property. Tracks 8C, less tracks, and an A track, 215 feet by 100 feet in the north half of the northwest, south uh, half of the south half of north half of northwest of northwest, 29-3-15, tracks 8C, 215 feet by 100 feet in the southwest corridor of north, Second of Northwest 29-3-15, salvage MHs, tracks 8C, west half of west half of <laughs> north 12 acres of south half of Northwest 29-3-15, salvage MHs, aka 2003 Northeast Street. That is a long. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Sorry for the mouthful, guys. <laughs> Uh, today we're going to be talking about 2003 Northeast Street. It's a property currently owned by Joan Costner. Uh, <clears throat> traditionally in these cases of ordinances passed, I'm also the hearing officer for the city of Guyman appointed by the city to handle these cases typically in-house. Uh, but given the nature and the uniqueness of... Move the microphone up or is it on? Yes, it is. Can you hear me? No, no, not really. Sean, move it up to you. Oh, sorry. There you go. Put it like on the side. Can you hear me now? Okay. Because we're more worried about the people behind you. Yeah. Okay. Flip it up. Flip it up like this. There you there go. You. There we go. Thank you. All right. Given the uniqueness of this particular case and just the size of it, uh, we felt that it was necessary to bring it in front of the council uh, for you guys to discuss and decide what was best <coughs> for this particular property. Uh, currently, we have done several things. We have actually observed this initially on 220. 2019 uh, it was simultaneous with complaints received at the time of observation several uh, citizens had actually reported this property uh, the property owner was initially contacted on March 14th and the property owner met with code enforcement and his team on 4 2 2019 multiple attempts to remedy the conditions have been commenced by code enforcement officers in the past 15 years to no notable success The scope of this particular project is uh, the properties are approximately 18 acres in size, being one of the largest adjoining properties in the city of Guyman. Upon initial inspection, 40 to 50 percent of the land area is covered with trash, refuse, or discarded or abandoned items. Property owner and family admit that they have been aware of the present conditions for the past 15 years, but haven't been able, unable to rectify it. Again, multiple complaints from the community and adjoining properties have been received. And for your guys' benefit, I actually brought a copy, a written copy of a complaint to distribute to you guys. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Uh, upon initial inspection, a code enforcement officer, myself, and the fire marshal determined the existence of several fire and health hazards present on the property. Uh, the present conditions meet the definition criteria for a public nuisance as outlined in 11 OS 22-111. The following are several pictures of the property that you guys can view for yourselves. Yeah. And I will let you know that the, these photographs are current. They're uh, dated 5-2, and they really does not do not do any justice to the actual conditions of the property. Uh, 
Uh, back on the property, on the front of the property, you can visibly see that they've made an effort. Uh, however, most of that has been pushed to the back of the property and piled up in several places, and there's still a lot of work to do. Okay, at this time, I'd like to invite Fire Chief Dean McFadden to address the present fire and health hazards existing on the properties. Information will pertain to this particular matter and this uh, subsequent matter uh, that will be later be discussed. Uh, I definitely agree with um, the fire marshal's statements and um, uh, Sean's statements about how it is a health and life safety hazard um, and a fire hazard as well, and, and we'd like to help them clean it up as much as we can. So. Um, are there any specific questions y'all have for me? You say you would like to help them clean it up. Well, how, however, the city as a whole, okay. how, how we can help them. Okay. So um, there have been uh, two fires on this property uh, that I know of, and um, uh, I see the potential for more fires if kids get in there and play and do things that they're not supposed to be doing on those vacant buildings. So. Okay. That's quite a bit of land, right, Chief? That's, that's a lot of land. 17 acres. 17 acres, I think, right? 18. 18. So. <clears throat> it says here that possibly estimated at $10,000 for a cleanup. Is that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It actually currently is. There's a lot to dispose of out there, and it's a many, many tons of. Uh, debris and refusal that needs to be picked up and disposed of. Uh, and that's not to include the labor. Okay. So. And would you like me to continue? What's that? You want me to, would you like me to continue? Sure. Okay. Uh, reportable progress. They actually, Ms. Costner, the property owner, has a initiated a church volunteer group that has, a, has made a commendable effort out there. They actually have done a lot of work that is visible. Although it's commendable, the scope is much larger than the resources that I believe that the property owner has available to her. As said before, the, that there are efforts visible from the public right away. However, a large percent of the trash and refu refuse has been moved and piled in the rear of the property and abatement of these conditions has not been satisfied. It will be also noted that the property and the owner and the volunteer group utilize the city's free cleanup day to dispose of trash and refuse, refuse at no cost. This is no longer an option, a viable option, and upon the pro property owner's own admission, she does not have the means or financial ability to pay for the cleanup and disposal out of pocket, which leaves the city administrative abatement as a final and possibly only alternative. Staff recommends, due to the amount of time that conditions have been present, 15 years plus, staff and the community feels that the property owner has had more than ample opportunity to remediate and remove the conditions on her own has failed to do so to satisfy ordinance and statute remediations. It is believed by the staff and community and the existing conditions are hazardous to the health, safety, and welfare of the community, deprives neighboring properties of respective property value, and the presence of conditions constitutes a public nuisance. And as such, we recommend that uh, yeah. in order of determination declaring the presence of conditions as a public nuisance and furthermore, order the removal of the public nuisance and conditions to be commenced no later than 30 days from the date of order and to be completed no later than 60 days from the date of order. 30 days work time pursuant to 11 OS 22-211. An estimated cost would be approximately 10,000. Sorry about that, I jumped the gun on that. Yep. And that's pretty standard what we give everybody on abatements yep. as recommended by staff. Yes, sir. And uh, at this time, if there's any questions from you guys for me, I would be more than happy to answer them. I don't have any, Mayor. I don't, I don't have any, does it? And at this time, if uh, Ms. Costner would like to come up and present her case, she's more than welcome to do so. Bless you. Right. Mrs. Costner, would you like to come up and... Hey, Sean. Would like <clears throat> Sean, yes. will you bend that down for her? Yes. Or maybe hold it for <clears throat> I'm 85 years young. I cut the fields with a 42-inch uh, uh, craftsman 
mower for years and years and years until I almost lost my eyesight. My husband was sick with his heart. My son was disabled from a bad surgery from Dr. Cohn in Amarillo, Texas. And I was taking care of my mother and who was in, uh, had Alzheimer's. And I had, I mean, I was on the dead run uh, from morning till night and then I, my eyes went bad and my husband died, my son died, my grandson died. And I, I have a granddaughter that has helped me and my church has helped me. And um, I just, I'm still dealing with the eye and I, I can barely hear, so I just have 15% of my hearing left. But um, I have, we had, they made a good start. I just didn't have any help for a long, long time and the weather hasn't been the best in the world to get out there and we have no facilities there. Like you can't get any drink of water or use a bathroom, you know, and so um, it's just, I'm trying really hard to, do, to get it sold, you know, I have a buyer that's going to take a, some of it. So maybe that will give me some money to hire some help and uh, make it right with everybody that's been happy. And, but I, I had, I'm not lazy. I just, I also had to do, my mother and dad lived at 10th in Oklahoma and they used the house that Lonnie de Usler lived next to next to and that was a big yard and I cut that too and um, so I was on a dead run and by the you know time you fed the ones that were sick uh, and I uh, my mother had Alzheimer's and I had to spend five hours a day with her and so it was I'm worn out <laughs> but I'm still here and I that's all I have to keep me the rest of my days which may be tomorrow, I don't know, but uh, as long as I'm here, I, I didn't, I could have moved to Denver, but I'd be lost up there, and I, I lived here since 1943. And I have uh, written in the paper for Guyman, you know, for the religious page, and I have done service at the Dunaway Manor, for their church on Thursday. I just gave that up after about 40 years. <laughs> and uh, so I'm trying to do what I can and I have some people that are going to help me. So I don't know what else to tell you. I've moved up to Central Plains and that is, we lived there for 55 years, but there were people that lived there a long time before that. <laughs> and each one left their little belonging, you know, there's so, so, something there. So I, w I have people, I, w I mean, you know, it's not just what we had, it's what a lot of people before us had. And we were in the country until, uh, I think that was about 1970 when my husband had back surgery and they, about that time they annexed us to the city. And um, so, I don't know, I, I just am trying with everything I can to do it right and to be a responsible even though I'm past the age of, <laughs> doing a day's work, you know, but uh, I can't, I still have my knee, my own knees, and I have diabetes, and so I don't want to have surgery on my knees, so, um, I don't know what else I can say, I don't, I, I'm just starting to get this, this, I, I guess I'll sell it in strips, or something, you know, to... Um. Does any of the council have any questions for Ms. Bob? I was curious if Mr. Ortiz had something Sorry. he'd like to say. Yes, uh, one thing I want to make a correction. Nothing was pushed from the front to the back of the property, like was stated earlier. Okay. Nothing. We hauled off 24,000 pounds of garbage because I had the uh, 
transfer station to calculate and keep track of everything that we brought in that day because I was curious. It was 12 tons. That was from E Street to the front of the building of the old school that sits there. And there is about, I'm going to say, another 50 to 60 tons that needs wow. to be uh, hauled off. And uh, so what we did, there was dilapidated buildings that were falling down. We crushed those things down and then we piled them up. There were several holes, uh, anywhere from five to 10, 10 feet uh, deep. We filled those things in with, uh, with dirt. And so there's not open holes. We were trying to get the, uh, the old burnt trailer, but we just ran out of time in the day. And we just, we couldn't get it done. And uh, Glenn Hatfield and myself have taken on this project. We, and we do have the resources to do it. Can it's ask, just, it's time. If we gave you an extension, how, how long would that extension now, I wish Glenn right? was here. He's in Oklahoma City tonight because uh, I, I collaborate with him on this deal. Uh, and uh, I know 30 days is not enough for us to get it done because we have businesses that we have to run. Right. So it's weekends that we would be doing this. And we did what we did in, in uh, 12 hours. Okay. So if we gave you 60 days and, and visited after that 60 days to see progress made, what do you think you could get done in 60 days? Uh, we're, well, Glenn and I, if we had five more days like we had, we feel we could have it cleaned up. So would, would so you're saying... And weekends. so I'm saying five, say I just don't want to pile up every single weekend because I don't know what it's going to, what kind of schedule I'm going to have. Would you do 90 days on it? Uh, 90, yeah, 90 days. Well, even, even if we did declare it a nuisance and we could give you the 60 days that staff recommends mm -hmm. with the mayor could set a, a date where you would check in to see if any progress has been made mm -hmm. even then we could give you an extension from there okay but yeah. the, as far as declaring it mayor i think i mean it's up to you yeah. i mean whoever makes the motion if we declare it uh, a nuisance 60 days let's see Mitch, do you have any so you think if we gave you 60 days, you could report back to us in 30 days progress and then 60 days? Because I, I think that's important for us. If we see progression in the deal, I can wrap my head around your trying. Absolutely right. And I know you, Ray, personally, and I know Hatfield. What's going on earlier? I didn't know. I just saw a garage sale out there. And so I always wanted to see what was out there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's why I moved. And then I saw the sign sitting there, and I'm like, what's going on? And then that's how I found out. And I, I understand this is yours and Art's, or Hatfield's busy time of year, too. Yes. So and I. So, but, and so, you know, weekend, Saturday is when we'd be doing it. It'd be Saturdays on Saturdays. Saturdays, yes. Yeah. Okay. I, I guess I would maybe, and I may be doing this wrong, make a motion that we declare the property a nuisance with a 60-day addition with a 30-day report back. You want them to report back after 30 and not I think so I mean I think we need to I think we need to keep it on the radar and the progress moving forward I think if we let it set it tends to wait up till day 50 and then we're all I second I have a motion and a second Swager <clears throat> aye Edgar aye Alvedras aye living good aye we've got four eyes <laughs> Item seven, uh, discussion and possible action of notice. On notice of hearing to declare structure dilapidated and order removal of dilapidated structure and set date for completion of work on, at the following property. Tracks 8C less tracks and A track 215 feet by 100 feet in the north, north half of northwest, uh, south half of south half. <laughs> of north half of northwest of northwest 29-3-15 tracks 8c 215 feet by 100 feet in the southwest corridor of north uh, second of northwest 29-3-15 salvage mhs uh, tracks 8c west half of west half of north 12 acres of south half of northwest 29 dash 3-15 salvage MH is also known as 2003 Northeast Street. Again, this is 2003 Northeast Street, and the property owner is also Joanne Costner. 
Uh, there's a hearing to clear structures dilapidated pursuant to 11 OS 22-112C. Uh, same, pretty much similar to work tail, workflow details as before. Uh, the property conditions were observed on 220 of 2019. Uh, simultaneous, complaint, simultaneous complaints were received at the time of observation. Uh, the property owner was contacted on the same date as the nuisance, the 314 2019. Property owner, met, property owner met with code enforcement on 4 2 2019. And again, multiple attempts have been attempted in the past to remedy the conditions that have been commenced by or in the past 15 years, not to no success. <coughs> On the property is currently seven structures. Uh, actually, there's a current total of about 13 structures, seven which are in our scope of work. The property owner and family volu voluntarily offer information and evidence of trespassers utilizing the present structures for drug use, unauthorized habitation, theft, and also vandalism. Again, the fire department has indicated that they have responded to two, two structural fires located on the property, one in the one main residence and one mobile home trailer. Attaches a map of all the structures uh, currently in our scope of work. Uh, most of these are mobile homes and all of these would fit the criteria of a dilapidated structure and abandonment. Each are a picture of this, this is the structure number one. It is the mobile home that was damaged by a fire. It is completely demolished on the inside and one side of the trailer is also, uh, has collapsed due to structural failure. Structure number two is also another trailer that is uh, unsecure and is dilapidated by all means and it cannot be habitated again. Structure three is also a dilapidated mobile home trailer and the, you can, as you can see there's a board propped up against the door and anybody can still access it if they were trespassing. Uh, so we would render that an unsecured building. Structure four is a permanent structure located on the property. It is currently unsecure, as you can see in the picture on the right. The, and you can see that it's dilapidated. Several of the windows are broken out. The floors are in partial decay and the walls, interior walls are in decay. Uh, this structure has been reported by fire marshal as being habited uh, unauthorized and by drug users and squatters. <coughs> and it is obviously a hazard to the community. Structure number five is an existing shop building on the property. The structure is visibly failing. The roof is peeling back, uh, exposing the interior to weather and other things. Uh, the building is unsecured. It can be accessed by anybody. Uh, that would be structure number five. Structure number six is also another mobile home trailer and is unsecured. You can see broken windows. And there's been forced visible, visible forced entry on it and there's also been evidence of vandalism by trespassers. Structured seven, you can visibly see the structure is failing, it is unsecured and is unsafe. Again, I will reiterate and I'll remind you of everything that uh, Fire Chief Dean McFadden said about these properties and we'll move on to the next. Uh, since the time of initial contact with the property owner, no structural, no action has been taken on these uh, seven structures since the time of contact. Uh, staff recommends much of the same, that the community and staff feel that these structures are hazardous to health, safety, and welfare of the community, and structures are, are, are uninhabitable, and the presence of these structures constitute a public nuisance. And as such, it is a recommendation of staff to enter an order of determination to declare the seven structures described herein as dilapidated and order the removal of the structures to be commenced no later than 30 days from the date of order and to be completed no later than 75 days from the date of order, 45 days work time, pursuant to 11 OS 22-112C. And the estimated cost here is $35,000 as $5,000 per structure estimated. At this time, I would like to, if you guys have any other questions, feel free to ask. Is there an inhabitable place there or uh, currently all of the structures I would deem uninhabitable however at this time some of the original structures on the property uh, we are not looking at in our scope gotcha 
which needs to be done first, the structures or the cleanup? <laughs> uh, in an ideal situation, all simultaneous. However, if they were to abate, I can understand the time constraints. And I would say probably the public nuisance would need to be addressed first, as is the biggest eyesore. And then also, but in conflict with that and argumentative to that, many of the structures currently are still a fire hazard and they're still a public hazard for any trespassers or anybody that may actually have permission to be there. They are still a hazard. So that would be for this panel to decide which one would be more important. Is there a plan <clears throat> on the structures? Ma'am, you can come up if you need to, if you can come up if you need to speak. Like the studio that was, can you speak in the microphone, the please? The studio Thank that you. was caught on fire, we are in the process of removing that. Um, the trailer, one of the trailer houses that was showed on there, the only thing wrong with it is a broken window, and it is, we're set in the process of selling that. She has sold two acres of land recently, which will be able to pay for some of the cleanup and removal. I've got two scrap yards coming to look at the trailers that are there, the remainder that y'all showed. Um, We've got people that are coming to do these things. It's just, it's a time thing. I'm, I'm one person. I'm out there Monday through Saturday, Monday through Sunday, lately trying to help her. Um, we've got, I have 20 cameras out there. Vandalism was a problem in the past. Since we put hunting cameras out there, that has almost completely disappeared. We had five kids from the neighborhood that borders that property last two years ago. They did come out there, and I caught them on camera, and they did come out there, and they've been working as opposed to getting through the juvenile system. We're trying to help them because don't, we don't want to wreck somebody's life. But if people would keep their children out of people's property, that would be one thing. But we do have 20 cameras in place out there. So there is surveillance on that property okay. to protect people and my grandmother. Um, like I said, she's, we're going to have money to do this cleanup. We just need some more time. Thank you. Is there any other questions? Yes, sir. Sean, was your $35,000 number, that's to get everything out of there? That's all the structures and, and all the contents that are in those, structure, those seven structures, and it would all, a lot of it be, be disposal weight. Yes. <clears throat> So staff recommendation 60 days yes it would be uh, actually I said 75 days I believe yeah I saw on that it said 75 here it says 60 on the it said 60 on the staff report and yeah. notice here okay yeah um, I don't know maybe I mistype on that one okay you can uh, step up ma'am you're fine I wanted, she wanted me to also mention that the one of the buildings on her property is at the original schoolhouse in the panhandle which we've are in process of getting uh, registered so it is a historical okay. site actually on that one Thank you. and on that particular structure it's not in our scope or in our, anything to okay. do with yeah, I was gonna say I didn't see that on there so staff recommended 75 days on it correct you get an update after but you have to read the whole agenda <laughs> so I'll forego <laughs> reading the whole enchilada <laughs> I, I'd make a motion that we give them 75 days with the 30 day at the same time update on where you're at and how you're moving forward would be my motion. Second. I Item got, seven. I got a motion and a second. Swagger. Aye. Edgar. <clears throat> Aye. Alvedras. Aye. Living good. Aye. We've got four eyes. Thank you guys. Hey, thank, thank you. you. Item 8, discussion possible action on approval of revised mutual release of all claims in the Edith Bird Sill versus City of Guymon IBTS Community Services, LLC. <laughs> Attached is the release. Correct, this is the, <clears throat> David, you wanna take that? Yeah, well, okay. that's, uh, this is just a document to wind up the settlement of that uh, Birdsell claim. The uh, city's insurance company paid on behalf of the city, so this is a document <clears throat> to close, close the matter up. And I'd recommend approval except for the, with one amendment, on the, since we don't have the entire council here, the uh, document provided that the uh, entire city council approved and the word entire needs to be stricken out of there, which we can do that. So I'd recommend that, that uh, 
it be executed with with that stricken I make a motion that we approve the revised mutual release of all claims in Edith Birdsill versus City of Guymon and IBTS Community Service LLC with the amendment of the word entire stricken from the amendment, or sorry, from the release. I'll second. I have a motion and a second. Edgar? Aye. Alvedras? Aye. Swager? Aye. Living good? Aye. We've got four ayes. Item nine, discussion and possible action on approval of mutual release and settlement agreement in in IBTS Community Service LLC versus City of Guymon in approved payment of $715,108.51. Uh, the agreement is attached. So final payment from December of 2018 in total was a little over 972000 Through negotiations in the last five months, this is a settlement agreement, which is a mutual agreement between both parties. Um, if council approves this, it is finalized and done. Um, but I would ask the same as David's motion on the last one, that if you do consider approval on this, that it is with the exception of not the whole council since Kim Peterson is not here. I'll make the motion that well, we have. I got a couple of questions. Uh, first of all, is there any liens on the equipment that IBTS bought for the city? What equipment did are you in talking like the about? Roller, uh, police, or the police cars, or anything right. like that? No, those were gifted to the okay. city of Gum. But I was just curious if there was any liens on those. As far as they I know, they're been. on ours within our insurance purposes okay. at this time. And I think the other thing, uh, I would ask that the next time we have such an important agenda item that we get. A few days more so we can all read it and study it a little bit closer because one day is to me is not enough when you're talking about this kind of money I'm, i might respond to that yeah, please councilman the, this document was just received uh in guyman i think day before yesterday okay. from from the ibts attorney and it had already been uh, it had been signed off on by they've already signed it Okay. So that's that was the reason for the short trigger on it. Okay, thank is, you. Is there any reason we can't postpone this? Uh, I don't think we should. So Mr. Swagger could read it. I read it. Well, there's okay. pretty much yeah, yeah pretty pretty, pretty much a commitment yeah, to have it done reading. by today. So, no, I. <clears throat> the total in between the two on based off of what was due in December. Mm -hmm. Within the negotiation period, the difference of $257,000 almost is what was negotiated down. Any other discussion? Do you have a motion? I'll make the motion that we approve the mutual release settlement agreement, IBTS, Community Services LLC, versus City of Guymon, and approve payment of $715,108.51 with the amendment that entire be stricken from the release item nine I second it I have a motion and a second Swager aye Alvedras aye Edgar aye living good aye we've got four ayes <laughs> item 10 discussion and possible action to appoint two new members to the golf board to fill the vacancy left by Lance Kemp and Terry Moore uh, the applications are attached are any of those applicants here? However, you do have a few members of Anyone the golf board. Anyone from the golf board like to come up? <clears throat> However, guys, in your packet, Chris McCune has withdrawn his application okay. from it, so he is no longer on that. You know, I sat in the back, so I hope I, I hope I wouldn't have to come speak, but since you guys are calling us up here. Uh, the, I guess as you guys have probably seen with the two members, current members stepping down, we have had trouble in the last two meetings reaching a quorum. So appointment is definitely necessary in this case. Um, <coughs> of the applicants that I'm aware of, at least, the only, ones, the only one that I have experience with, both as a colleague and 
uh, currently as a board member is Larry January. So he, he with his uh, existing schedule being retired, I think probably the leading two factors when it comes to being on a board like this is being able to meet for our schedule and then of course most importantly have an interest in the golf course and Larry has that uh, being retired. So uh, as far as the rest of the applicants, um, do you have anything to say on, on the rest of the applicants? I've, I don't know if I have Who is the rest of the applicants? You have uh, Larry, Larry January, January Moon. Larry Moon. And you have Glenn Rose. Glenn. I know Glenn Rose personally. So, you, what so would be your recommendation? I, I would recommend Glenn Rose and Larry January. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, guys. I Thank tried you. to give you all four, but I was told <coughs> I could only give you two. <laughs> Do I have a motion? I make discussion? a motion that we approve Larry. That we approve new members. Two new members of the golf board to fill the vacancy left by Lance Kemp, Terry Moore. Those two new members being Larry January and Glenn Rose, item 10. I'll second. I have a motion and a second. Edgar. Aye. Alvedras. Aye. Swager. Aye. Living good. Aye. We've got four ayes. <clears throat> item 11, discussion and possible action on approval of public internet filtering agreement with OneNet for the Guyman Public Library. Staff report attached. Good evening, Mayor and Council. I presume you all have my staff report regarding this. Yeah. Uh, we have to have some filtering at our public internet access at the library to protect us from copyright violations, uh, <coughs> bad porn sites, those sort of things. Uh, E-rate connection requires that we have uh, safeguards in place to protect the patrons from that. Our filtering software expired and we need to get something in place. Uh, OneNet has the ability to redirect this traffic to them before we get it back to us and have it filtered <coughs> both ways. And the cost is $600 a month, as you can see, which is reasonable. I did get a couple of other estimates, which were higher than that. I didn't have much luck finding too many places to do that online rather than buying new hardware or whatever. So yeah. to me, this looks like the best option. Okay. Did you get any local? Estimates or were I they really all didn't software? Know whether we had anybody local that did that, does PTCI do that? Any filtering? Yes. Do they? Um, I, I didn't even know that they did that, that my online searches didn't turn up anything like that, and I didn't ask to see if you guys did it or not. I is this know. temporary or permanent? Well, we could do it either way. Uh, this is a uh, e rate uh, has to be let for bid every year. And next year we could include the filtering as part of the project and could be probably funded under E-rate. This year we've missed that window and we've only got the connection approved. So for this year period anyway, we'll have to pay for this. So. Thank you. Any other questions? Please. Any discussion? Motion. I make motion that we approve the public internet filtering agreement with OneNet for the Guyman Public Library. I'll second that. I have a motion and a second. Alvedras? Aye. Swager? Aye. Edgar? Aye. Living good? Aye. We've got four ayes. Item 12, discussion and possible action on approval of inter interlocal agreement between the City of Guymon, Oklahoma, and the Board of County Commissioners of Texas County. Agreement attached. This is for the dirt work for the Correct. Uh, Soccer up, complex. Yeah. Yes, we yeah. met with County Commissioner Representative a couple <coughs> weeks ago, and they've agreed to help us on the soccer field. The rough grading, basically the city will ask uh, our local surveyor to go out and set grading stakes, and the uh, county then will schedule the crew to do the rough grading. I uh, think they said it would take maybe three to four weeks to do that. And then we're opening bids on May 22nd for the infrastructure part of the project. And then the contractor or the successful contractor uh, would then be uh, asked to do the final grade once the uh, sewer and water extensions are made to the site. So we're very pleased that the county's uh, agreed to work with us on the project and we think it's going to be a, 
a way to save a little money and, yeah. and get some work started out on our site. Thank you. Mr. Mitchell, it says that the uh, supervision is going to be on the city and the county. Who's, who's qualified to supervise on the city side? Our engineer. Okay. And on the county side? Uh, I would say the county commissioners. Okay. Uh, probably their superintendent, whoever the crew superintendent is. Okay. Our responsibility is to set the grading stakes, and we'll do that it, through the... Is that what we're considering? They're going to take it to blue top. Pardon? So they're going to take it to blue top, so the... We'll take it that far down. Well, the county we're, we're going to try to do as much rough grading as possible, okay. but the, probably most of the finished grading will be done after we do the installation of the sewer and water lines. Um, but it right. will get the it will get the site stabilized and and all that excess topsoil that's out there at the yeah. southwest corner of the property. They will move that to probably move it all the way across to the northwest corner and start there and work back to the to the east and and distribute that topsoil yeah. so it'd be great way great work to start on that project good way to save money good way to a save lot of money, money. <laughs> thank you any discussion motion make the motion that we approve the interlocal agreement between city of guyman oklahoma board of county commissioners texas county item 12 no second. I have a motion and a second. Egger? Aye. Alvedras? Aye. Swager? Aye. Living good? Aye. We've got four ayes. Item 13, discussion and possible action on approval of agreement between the City of Guymon and Hornbeak Blatt Architects for the purpose of interior renovation to the second floor of the Guymon City Hall building for office and interview spaces for the Guymon Police Department. Staff reports attached. <coughs> Mayor, Council, um, the given direction is to for the police department to occupy that vacated space in the upper east side of city hall upstairs um, we've looked at it and there are some additional offices and interview spaces that we need to work in there in order to make it functional for the police department and some with that lighting heating and air electrical um, Tony Blatt, uh, architect firm, is the one that designed this building here. And I've talked with him on the phone as well as uh, Mr. Mitchell. And <coughs> there's no structural issues. Everything should tie in fairly well. We just need some design so we'll be able to have a plan to go out for bid. You have any concerns about? their design remember when we came into this building they had this built up so high you couldn't even see us and then one thing they were supposed to do that they never did do was when you go visit the clerks across the hall to pay your bill they were going to cir circles it cut circles in and put it so you could speak to them and they never did do that and you, if you carry on a conversation with those ladies over there, you've got to bend over and talk through the, the hole. And uh, I just wondered if you had any concerns about that. Well, at, at this point, they haven't designed any changes. I've discussed with him over the phone kind of what we're looking at. And, I mean, any concerns that we would have during the design period, we would address. Okay. So are we simply going out for design or are we going out for them to bid the project? No, this that's is two different things to design and give us what we need to go out to bid to do the remodeling upstairs. Would they throw in a light over Petty? No. <laughs> He's in the He's dark. kind of in the dark. It's not going to happen. He's <laughs> in the dark. <laughs> so they are, they are strictly designing it, not running the project. Correct. Because that's two different things. Yeah. So Tony should have all the plans, every spec, everything that was done currently for this building in place. <clears throat> the current estimate within range and what we are being told is within $5,000 to do everything we have to go out for bid. We need something in so place before we get contractors to show them what we need Otherwise, it's just me and Bab saying this is what we want, and then who knows what kind of bids we would get in. So are we going to send him to get our bids then within this? So will he be doing the bidding process on the contractor's force? 
No, Tony is strictly doing the architecture work on what Chief Babb and I have gone up and designed for him to do certain things of electrical, duct work, those certain things. From that point forward, we will do the bid process okay. here. We just need his specs and him to design so we give the contractor something to bid on. He's going to okay. Other than just our I think work. that's different than what I understood the other day when we, we just talked, don't so need that's why. That. He's going to architect it up to code. Well, that, but he, yes, but what I'm saying is we need to give these contractors something of what it is we, need we a expect. Side plan. Because yeah, me and Bab telling them what we want, who knows exactly what they're going to anticipate, and then we're not going to have any sort of within range of the right. bids coming in. And I'm good with that. The other day I'd understood we were going to send them out to run the project. We need his architecture plans for the project, specifically okay. for the police department on the southwest, south side of this upstairs. Okay. Good. <clears throat> All right, any other discussion? Motion? <clears throat> Sorry. I make the motion that we approve the agreement between City of Guyman and Hornbeak Blatt Architects for the purpose of interior renovation to the second floor of the Guyman City Hall building for office and interview spaces for the Guyman Police Department. Item 13. Do I have a second? I don't think I can second at this time. I think we need to hire the CMAR first to help us and let him bid the architecture out to make sure that we're structurally right. An architect gets paid on the size of the project. And a general, a CMAR is going to just charge. He's going to say, I can do this job for X, and he's going to bring that stuff to the table. Is that wrong, Mitch? I can't tell you what's right or wrong, Mitch. Okay. on how your belief is within this well no i'm asking you if that's this or not is he going to give us the correct code that we need to abide by in the state of he's Oklahoma? not he's going to hire an architect but an architect that's in charge of a project is doing it as a percentage of the project typically okay it, it, where a construction manager is going to come in and say i'll do this for one hundred and fifty thousand, and then he'll hire the architect within that to be up to code and structure so in this in this in this agreement, I can't do that for what I put into the budget this year. If he comes in and says I can do this for one hundred fifty thousand, it won't work. That's what? not what I talked about previous in the eighteen budget year. Um, if You're saying because of the amount, right? I, I was just throwing a swag out there. So okay, I, was I mean, say, well, I don't I know what it's worth. I didn't anticipate paying somebody one hundred fifty thousand dollars to do the renovation. What budget figure did we have? One hundred fifty thousand for the total project. That's getting the architect plans, doing it. Was getting the all the work Did done I read and getting, 5, the police, getting the police station moved from where it is in its current location upstairs. I think that's a great idea. I want to state that. I think that's absolutely a great idea on I that. I agree. <clears throat> it's phenomenal. <clears throat> then I guess, John, it fails for a lack of a second. Okay. Item 14, discussion and possible action on approving annual funding in the amount of 7500 for RC incubation. Attaches the funding request. Good evening, gentlemen and ladies. Uh, I'm Brenda Neville, and I'm here to request... You want to bend that down? See if we can hear you a little better, or if they can hear you better. I'm here to request the 7500 on behalf of Artist Incubation. They can't hear you in the back, ma'am. Sorry. Okay. Is that better? Okay. <laughs> uh, this funding would be used to run our summer camps, and last year we had over 70 people. We're doing it a, a countywide, and we have several other things going on, but let me give you a calendar. Did you say 70 people attended, Brenda? Yes. Last year. Thank you. Thank you. 
<clears throat> so this would help get us supplies uh, as we've given you the information before we're 5013C so you know we rely on donations and and that mostly we do have a storefront but that is basically used to help like OPSU students and area artists mm -hmm. to show their work and if mm -hmm. we can sell it we do uh, we do do several programs throughout the season but this money would be specifically for our summer okay. and since we lost the funding before from the city you know it's starting to get tight so, so what does it cost per yeah. per uh, attendee for the uh, the summer what's it called uh, sixty the art camp yeah it depends on the art camp but that like the 7500 includes us getting the teachers to come in right now we've got uh, the art teacher at Guyman High School is going to be coming in and giving an art class so we pay for that and then the board members on their own we bring in uh, any any additional stuff like treats or stuff for the kids so that they have snacks what does it cost the kids to go attend about sixty dollars and how depending many depending on the event and what we're doing and how many do you typically get an event what's a, a large end to the small side uh over the spring we did one around easter so we got probably 12 the first day and i think 10 the second um but then the summers are are heavier and they run around 70 and it we have so a kids. big one like at the end of june so for the twelve thousand dollars, that's seventy five hundred. If we gave it to you, and the forty two hundred that the kids are spending on seventy kids, right? Where does that well, cost? Well, and that a lot of the cost goes to buying supplies, uh, <coughs> buying, uh, paying the teachers to come in and get the class. Then, uh, you know, of course, like I said, since funding has been low, we'll need to probably buy additional tables depending on the crowd that we have so that we have enough you know area for them so then also all of the posters that we have to do and the marketing of it that helps with that and so and what, the from what I, are attached for some of them from what i understand so like the the profits on the art gallery and you guys sell memberships to the the opsu students and other artists no we do not sell memberships at this point so they so if they sell something do you guys get a cut of that we'll get, a, we'll get a, com, a bit of a commission yeah and what and it depends on you know the artwork and the artist yeah. okay. i'd like to point out one uh, one thing that is happening this weekend and that's uh bronco training over at the college that uh and they needed ten thousand dollars for funding to pay for their instructors and we did approve that so uh, I think I'm not sure if this project the youth project or our project for the summer will go forward if they don't get the funding and I think that's a disservice to the kids of this community yeah no it probably will not so, so did you take this before convention and tourism Hard, yes. This seventy-five hundred dollar request. No, no, not this. We we went 30, before before and 000, requested yeah. funding, and they denied us. Because <clears throat> I think what I'd read is that they had made a request that you come to them for each event. Well, I have not heard of that request yet. So I I was think I was at that meeting. I think that was the request. Is that correct, Shay? So I think I think through if the look channels, the minutes, Shay. It looks like if you look in the minutes. Yeah. Shay, Shay made a motion to move the line item asking for funds per event and it was second that was not spoken of at our board meeting so that I did not this know. would have been at the February 19th meeting it looks like <clears throat> is that correct so this didn't go before convention and tourism at all then the 7500 
you know, no. the, they requested the 30,000 for <clears throat> the entire year. And that was denied. All right. And then it was a motion made that this needs to go before the convention of tourism per line item per event, correct? Yeah, um, I feel like with tourism, I'm sorry. That's okay. I feel like with tourism, with them asking for $30,000, we wanted them to come to you and get funding for the city. And I, we weren't saying absolutely no to, we were saying no to the $30,000. We were hoping that you all would go ahead and say, well, you know, they need some amount of money, but they're on a different level than other things that we have given money to. Other groups that we gave, like Main Street Guy, whenever they came and we gave them $30,000 for their funding, they actually, you become under scrutiny. Just like when I write, I have four kids, and each one of my kids is different. So whenever one of them comes and says, hey, I need this money, first thing I do is say, well, where's your money at? What are you doing with it? And that's kind of what we wanted. We wanted to know where their money was going and what they were doing with it. That was our question of that day, whenever we said, well, you know, we're denying it because we didn't actually get any of their financials. So I think that if they came back with financials, even to you all, and asked, you know, can we get a funding, I think that that should be a, maybe looked at differently than the $30,000. The $7,500 that they're asking for now probably should have come in between, into tourism and asked for the funding for that. But I think yearly, if they're going to need something, that was an annual thing that they wanted. And it says this one's annual. If they want this one, too, maybe it should become a line item or looked at differently, but I think that the funding that they get should come from the city. Not from convention and tourism. Right. Because it doesn't generate convention. I see. Right. And the 7,500, if approved, would come from convention and tourism, correct? Correct? Correct. There's no budgeted line item for a <coughs> summer arts program yeah, took within the 2019 right. budget. Yeah. It's not within the budget. Um, it's not within I don't know budget. where y'all want to pull it out of uh, or what it would go towards. Uh, well, I really wouldn't have a problem taking it out of uh, uh, the motel hotel tax since we increased that. But it seems like I, would, I feel like you guys, I mean, and even on tourism, we sure are spending a lot of money on that hotel motel tax that we really haven't even gotten that increase yet from. And oh. I mean, we already have the soccer fields and we have other things that we are definitely dedicated to. So well, we need to wait a little bit of time and see how much money actually comes in there before we just start dedicating the money to somewhere. I mean, it, we've doubled it since last year at this time. Okay. Cool. I, I think we got those figures last. The when does summer tour. art camp start? It's at the last week last week of June okay so they have one more I mean we actually today would have been a tourism meeting but there was nothing on the agenda so we did not meet so they have the first of June to, if they want to bring this in front of tourism in, in my opinion and I'm just one this what should go in front of convention and tourism if, it's, if that's where it's <laughs> gonna come okay. from that that's just my opinion you guys can tell me I'm wrong well, I, I absolutely agree. I think I, I would like to show you all within and what we're talking about with hotel motel tax. The budgeted item for that in 2019 was $301,000. It's already been set aside for 315 year to date. So but that's 250,000 of it's going to the correct. Soil. But I'm saying right. we're already 15,000 spent that was not been encumbered at this point <coughs> for that. Just letting you all know. So I. <clears throat> Back to what I was going to say, that I think if we as a city and a council are going to have advisory boards, we've got to utilize their advice on such said items, right. no matter what that is. So, I mean, not trying to pass the buck, but I think their group needs to hear that. Right. I mean, just because that, you know, that is what we asked for is if they had other yeah. things besides that. But I... I believe that they presented their budget to you guys that there should have been some money or something set aside for artist incubation. I mean, I, that, that was our recommendation. We weren't saying don't give them $30,000. We're asking you all to look at their budget and see what it is that the city needed to give them to help them out. Through tourism? Or? No, through the, the city. city. Right. Ms. Strong, would you like to... 
I think we, what we're missing is for three or four years with the previous city manager, she, maybe it came from tourism, but she said, I can do this out of community development because you guys collect sales taxes. So we didn't really get funded the same way as you're asking right now. It was, she said, there's also a community development part or economic development part of tourism where I can just make a decision to fund you like that. So it's just like we're just missing the support for the last several months that we've had for several years from the city. So we're just trying to figure out how to get through our summer and things. And I, I personally think these programs are good. Where I struggle is if we're charging artists to sell something or we're holding money back, at some point that becomes a business that should be able to stand on its own. Is that a five-year plan that we get to that and we're stepping we, down we'll ne We never year? make it with that. We're a 501c3. Oh, I hear that. And we don't, we're probably not going to sell enough art at 40% commission when it's 12,000 a year sales and we have a staff and we have utilities and a building and we're volunteers, but we have staff. 12,000 doesn't go that far. So we have to count on funding from the city and uh, maybe a foundation. So we just have to ask all the time. We're con I don't want to come up here and ask you guys for money, but I do feel like it's worthy. I wouldn't be doing it. So I know you have things to do, but we're doing a lot of things for the youth. This organization is a nice uh, part of the city of Guymon's quality of life. There isn't anything out there like it. There's more and more youth getting involved. And if there's any way, you know, legally that you can and consciously feel good about taking it. She, Kim used to take it from something community development. I don't know how she got around us going in front of tourism. And I'm maybe sure not had something, to how she got yeah. it. I don't want to go it there. It maybe by had it maybe had something to do with because we collect sales taxes. Does that help? I'm just going to say this is a different council uh, from then. It's a different, different city manager. manager. And a different I just don't want to get into anything. But we don't know. We're trying to change gears and work with you. Well, and, and, we, and, we're and trying I to work think with too, you. I, I think too. We're, we're trying, trying to set to a precedence right of. <clears throat> so, are you saying they shouldn't come to you, Shay? I want to understand what you want to say. So, or you're saying that they should come directly to the city on this if it's a line line item every year. Well, tourism has exactly the same issue that you have, and. It's, you know, that you see a storefront and you see them making money. And, and we asked them for, for their financials, and they would never bring it to us. Whenever Main Street Guyman or somebody else, they brought their financials. We could go through it and ask questions, but financials were never brought. And then I, they said they brought financials to you guys. I, I just... So it becomes like, you know, it's not a tourism thing. They're not doing bed tax. They don't have... It's, it's a Guyman thing. I don't know exactly where the, and that's what our confusion is too down at tourism is. I can agree with, I mean, I can agree it's not a tourism. Where would that convention. come from? This one thing that she's asking about would be an event, which we did state, I stated and it was passed that you should bring events to us and let us look and see if we can help you fund those. We did bring, we brought something. We, we brought our basic P and L to you every month. We're willing yeah, to do we that. Got, we did get our. We're, you're welcome to anything. P and L's. You can you can month. walk over there and look when in our computer, gave, and we'll give you we'll log in, and let you see anything you want to yeah, see. Yeah, when they gave their presentations, they would. I think you'll find we operate pretty well for what little what little we take in. Yeah, I think uh, you I know think us. I think as a city, you're going to have, have to decide whether or not this is something that you're going to fund and help them out with, or this is something that you're going to say, hey, you guys need to stand on your own, even as a C. Uh, 501c3 they have to get funding from, from somewhere 501c3s i mean we don't you don't necessarily give ymca lots of money right. and churches are 501c3s so where is it that you draw that line and say okay yes you're saying you're a 501c3 but how much help does the city actually right. need to give you that that's i think as council members that's where you guys have to come in and decide what it is that you all need to do for artist incubation across the street so organizations that you just listed they have their own they have their fundraisers they do their right. fundraisers throughout the year it's a right. pretty good thing so it's the same deal do you have fundraisers I think the only I would just what I can point out is that we collect sales taxes on everything we sell it's not enough I'd like to give you guys all the money you need I'd like to not have to come to you but we need your help and 
collecting sales taxes? Does that help you? So let me ask you this, how much, how much more with artist incubation events throughout the year do you feel like you will need? I mean, I understand the 7,500 this time. Oh, that'll take us till the fall. And then we do work on grants. Um, we'll, our miniature art show, we'll get a little bit of money from the Arts Council for that. We do need money for that Christmas open house. Now remember, the Christmas open house is the largest sales tax generated night of the year for Guymon, Oklahoma. <coughs> I think three years consecutive. I think I would probably argue that, but. That's well, okay. other than Walmart, because we've called around and we've asked the merchants who participate in it, what they're, <coughs> because the businesses aren't normally open after five. So that night after five is the biggest sales tax night for local downtown merchants. The biggest sales tax night I would agree with. That's, all, well, that's what I meant to say. Okay. That's different than what you said. Well, I take it back. I How want that word entire taken out of it. <laughs> How much funding have you received from individuals or corporations? Uh, or? We've gotten $1,000 this year. We expect to have some more maybe in the summer. But it's in our first six months that we used to get funding from the city that we're kind of hurting right now. Mitch, is there any place in your budget outside of convention and tourism that there's any kind of funding for things like this? You could always drip. You could always dip in. And, you could always do the general fund, which has been decreasing over the last four years, and we can do a budget amendment. Because I've got to be honest, I can see Shay's point that it's not convention and tourism, and just because it's not generating <coughs> motel bed tax. Right, that's, got, that's a different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I absolutely can wrap my head around that to your point. <laughs> I, I think if I could actually wrap my head around matching the 4,200 that you think you'll make, I, I just think if you're gonna come back several times at some point, that has to stand on its own or you gotta get a different storefront, right? Me personally, your business as a radio well, but we're a nonprofit, and well, I hear that, to fulfill our mission to create a new economy and culture based on art and help the college students, I don't know when we're going to sell enough art to do that. We wanted to be selling more than we are. But 501c3s get funding from other places too. Like, don't you does the to, Oklahoma? Does the Oklahoma Arts Council? They do fund, they'll fund us probably for the miniature art show this fall. We do try to use all of that. You what can only amount, apply what twice. Amount, what amount is that? It's like 2000 to 2500 per event. And we'll apply. And we'll apply for the Christmas open house for that. Of course, the carriages cost us 3000 But So what, what actual fundraisers are you doing to help? Oh, organizers? well, tell you what. We're doing concessions at the Texas County Fair. Let me just advertise that. Okay. We're going to be doing the concessions, bringing back the old-fashioned menu items you used to have out there. We're willing to work for it. Sometimes we do dinner on the lake. We may find it. We're getting older. We need some help. We love that project, dinner on the lake. What else do we do for fundraisers, Brenda? Yeah, we usually do a Cajun boil. We do hope to have cooking classes, and it should change things for us the last half of this year if we get that going like we think. We, we should be in better shape. We are trying to help ourselves. That, that's very close. We had our appliances delivered this last week. We should be operating next week over there. And we will be setting up cooking classes. So we're trying to help ourselves. Any other questions or discussion? What is your Christmas ask? Just, I can actually our, wrap my head around that what? convention. And your Christmas ask, what will that be? <clears throat> that again is I would ask for be. five if you'd give it. I would ask for five if you'd give it. If you wind up at 3,000 and cover our carriages, that would be helpful. I just talked to them again today to make sure they're coming to Guyman. That would be helpful if you cover the carriages. You know, we do make people show a, a sales tax receipt to ride the carriages. They have to have bought something in Guyman somewhere that day. So what does the materials for the kids cost, straight up? Oh, I don't $7, know. $7,500 buys that. This is not, I got kids. I know. It'll that's buy a not, hell of a that $7,500 is not all about just what it costs for that camp. It's getting us from here to there. Because, like I said, we don't have your funding that we're used to having. And so we're having to do a little bit of remodel. We're going to need some new tables. 
I, we probably have to spend fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars to replenish our supplies that we've used up. Instructors, wages between now and then. Lighting is a problem. We need some more of that. So that will just take us through. I think we'll have a great camp. I think it's something you'll be proud of. We will probably have upward of 70 students. And then we also had an adult class that Saturday. We didn't mention that. There's a little bit of engineering that needs to be done, some electrical work that's getting old. It's an old building. So there's several things. So have you went out and asked for donations for those kind of things from our locals, <coughs> electricians? Some, some, not enough. Oh, they do. I mean, we have contractors that are donated thousands. Oh. I mean, it sounds to me like a lot of those items we could get donated. I, I, as a councilman, can wrap my head around materials for kids. I can't wrap my head around helping you with lighting and remodeling. Well, we need it so they can see the work in there. But it is mostly about we're doing a lot of things for kids. <clears throat> Any other discussions? Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion that we approve annual funding in the amount of 7500 uh, not annual. I'll make a motion that we approve funding in the amount of seven thousand five hundred dollars for our incubation. Second. I have a motion and a second. Edgar. Nay. Swagger. Aye. Alvedras. Aye. Living good. Nay. We've got two nays, two ayes. Okay, I guess. Yeah. Sorry, we didn't. If we didn't do a good job pitching you. <laughs> Thank you. All right, bye. Item 15: Discussion regarding dates to go for geo bond election. Here's the big one. Who's going to be our spokesman for that? So I've got two dates uh, planned uh, within the last two weeks. I've had conversations with Rick Smith and Alan Brooks uh, going over the geo bond. <clears throat> There's really no action to be taken tonight. It's mainly just setting out dates. The plan within my talks with Rick and Alan both of a projected date would probably be September 10th or October the 8th. If we go about that, that means we would have to file for the September 10th election date by July 11th. And if it's the October 11th election date, we have to file by August 8th. So I've given you all a little bit of information with some revised numbers revised streets um, I would ask for y'all to kick that around look at it get back to me let me know your thoughts your discussions I'm sure we will have many talks discussions and uh, workshops as we go forward but I just wanted to give you all kind of a forecast in the next five months on where we're at um, <clears throat> Britt Rick and Alan both don't have a specific date and plan. Those were the two that I told them that I would like to shoot for. Um, I would prefer the September 10th date uh, to go to a vote of the people on as opposed to the October just because we're kind of getting into budget and a whole lot of stuff going on in our world that I would rather go ahead and get that knocked out in September as opposed to October, but I gave you both dates. Again, your information is in front of you. Um, we can have further discussions. I just wanted to put it on here, letting the people know that it is a possibility. I will be coming to y'all down the road for uh, action on it. But This is a big ticket item for the city of Guyman because everybody knows the, the status of our roads and this would be really good, but also it's going to be hard to pass. Um, there's going to have to be a lot of education given, um, handed out to the public on what it what it pertains to, where it's going directly to, and it's just it's something to plan for the future. 
I'd would, like to see us start educating the public now. Yeah. Mitch, would this be reoccurring every 10 years or? The way a GO bond, a, a general obligation be, bond works, and what we're setting out is a 10 year period. Okay. I can tell you from history on a lot of other municipalities throughout the state of Oklahoma is once the term has expired, you go back to a vote of the people for a simple majority, and most all of them vote yes for it because they see the results in those process of what it is that it goes towards. Yeah. But after 10 years, I would, again, that's a council action to go back out for a vote of the people, but it's recurring. It's already on the books. It's set in place. It's going. The people have seen what it accomplishes, and it's really a beneficial thing from a standpoint of maintenance and furthering your community on this specific project, which is 70% dedicated. I think it's great. I, I think it's time. Yeah, definitely. And I agree with Larry. I think we need to start educating the public now. I think there's a need and a want out there for it. Just, just getting a pass. <clears throat> and I, I, I think it'll have legs. Any other discussion? <clears throat> All right. Item 16, new business. Any new business? Item 17, we'll stand adjourned as the Gaza City Council. Convene as the Gaiman Utilities Authority. Item two is done. Item three, discussion and possible action on approval of invoice number 00002558848 in the amount of $22,703.53 to Seward County Landfill for general trash removal for the month of March 2019. I'll make a motion that we approve invoice number. Twenty-five fifty-eight forty-eight in the amount of twenty-two thousand seven hundred and three dollars and fifty-three cents to Stewart County Landfill for general trash removal for the month of March, twenty nineteen. Second. I have a, a motion and a second. Edgar. Aye. Swager. Aye. Alvedras. Aye. Living good. Aye. We've got four eyes. Item four: discussion and possible action on approval of invoice number two nine seven six one in the amount of one hundred one thousand dollars. Uh, Seven hundred seventy-five dollars and zero cents to Inframark LLC for installation of four VFDs on SRB blowers at the wastewater treatment plant. Voice is attached. I talked to city manager on this. Go ahead. No, you can speak um, if you'd like. I I wanted to know who Inframark is, and I guess they they used to be uh, the old uh, yeah, Severn, Severn Trent. Trent. So I was kind of worried about these VFDs and the cost of them, but they kept us out of DEQ's eyes. Yeah. So. <laughs> this has been previously passed by council. I brought it to you on the last year um, over the proposal based off our caps that we get from Inframark. Um, because we don't have VFDs in place, they're there now. Your electricity costs should pay back within 13 to 14 months off of what we pay just instead of having VFDs in place, which are four of them. So uh, what I'm saying is instead of it coming on all at once and really shocking the electrical grid for our station, these being in place, which has already been given approval, is the final invoice for that project based off your 2015 A note and the residual that was left over that, and that's where I brought the money from. Okay. Um, interest to date was about 13000 after this payment, what is left in the 2015A note is about 50 grand. So that's where it's coming from. I've, I've had a lot of experience with VFDs and they, they are a must on this type of deal. Definitely. Any other discussion, mm -hmm. motion? I'll make a motion that we approve invoice number 29761 in the amount of 101,775 dollars to Inframark LLC for installation for it BFDs on SBR blowers at the waste wastewater treatment plant <coughs> item four I second it have a motion and a second Swager aye Alvedras aye Edgar aye living good aye we've got four eyes item five 
Discussion and possible action on approval of quote in the amount of $37,250 for a grapple dump trailer combo. Quote is attached. So at the beginning of 2018, you had, well, Tracy, you want to talk about this? That's Tracy Bowers, if you didn't know. He, that's what he looks like with his face shape. I was just going to say, you very cleaned up today. I've been told. Now, this is that, uh, you know, we was going to look at a truck, the grapple truck. Those things are huge and immense. And I, I've been talking to several different dealers, distributors, and uh, a lot of the municipalities are using this. It's called a knuckle boom grapple. It's got a clamshell on it. Uh, and they're using these dump trailers. A lot of the smaller municipalities our size are having a lot of luck with this. Uh, they're saying one man can operate these things. They get really good at it. Uh, the one we're looking at, it's got a 15 foot reach. Uh, it should pick up about 2,600 pounds at full extension, 1,300 pounds. Uh, uh, the maneuverability in our alleys, the one I looked at was 35 foot long. No, you know, it didn't bend or nothing. So trying to get in an alley, it's gonna be difficult. Uh, I think this is a good option for us to look at and try. Yeah. Um, I think it would make a lot of difference. Uh, if we like it, I'm thinking maybe two of them. You know, you got two guys out there then picking up. Uh, hopefully it'd help us get these alleys cleaned up, picked up. And uh, I think education of the public and letting them know, you know, dumping it on the ground out there in the alley is actually littering. It's not allowed. <laughs> Uh, the trash that they pay for is household trash. It goes in the dumpster. Uh, I think an education would be good to let them know about. But uh, this is what we're looking at right now. Okay. I think it's a good option besides going with a big, huge truck. Okay. I like the reason for a knuckle boom also in discussions with Tracy is as opposed to a grapple hook is hopefully eventually we get to a point where we clean up the alleys enough that we do curbside service based off what we're charging our citizens for these things a knuckle boom wouldn't tear up your yard or concrete or anything else because it's just a clamshell that closes as opposed to getting in and digging it so but going through the basis of where we're at within this that's it's a four to six week time frame order yeah, uh, because they come from florida so they'll come from florida um, they'll deliver it i think it's uh, i agree with tracy it's a wonderful thing and hopefully we can expedite the process and do it more efficiently I think it's important to know, uh, let the citizens know that five dollars that's on their yes. uh, utility payment every month. This is one of the things we're buying with that five dollars. That's correct, and I think it's a good option instead yeah. of. I mean, those trucks are a large dollar amount. And this is a good idea for us to look at, see how it works. If it works great, we can go on to the next step, maybe. Okay. okay. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? <coughs> I make the motion that we approve quote the amount of thirty-seven thousand two hundred fifty dollars for the grapple dump trailer combo item five. I second it. I have a motion and a second. Swagger. Aye. Alvedras. Aye. Egger. Aye. Living good. Aye. We've got four eyes. Item six, new business. Item seven, reports from city manager and council members. You want me to go? Go for it. Okay. Yes, sir. Hotel tax, we're up 33% from where we were last year. Sales tax is almost uh, almost up 30,000 from last time this year. And use tax is up 55% as opposed to what it was last year. Um, I wanted to say thank you to Larry Mitchell. He donated his former, um, I guess, patio furniture to the golf course pavilion. <laughs> it's actually very <laughs> nice. He brought it all the way from Oklahoma yeah, yeah. City through <laughs> Uh, I guess red dirt covered terrain, uh, which he almost got stuck in. I also wanted to say that the green ribbon that I'm wearing is in support of Mental Health Week, which this is what that is. Um, and we thank those who brought those by city offices today. We were all wearing them. Yeah. I wanted to speak on the cleanup day and what a success it was. I, I emailed each one of you with the total tonnage of 125 tons that we took in uh, so it was one big day we were exhausted as staff I got a sunburn it was awesome um, but I wanted to say thank you to all the citizens that took advantage of that wonderful program and to all the 
staff that took time out of their days to work on a Saturday to help us get that accomplished. The first annual City of Guyman Pioneer Days Golf Tournament was a success as well. Um, we had 26 teams that played the Friday of. Uh, we had nine teams on the waiting list. And I want to say a huge thanks to those donors, whether individual or businesses, who helped donate towards the fountains and the plants that were planted on 18 and throughout the clubhouse, and uh, along with the staff that took the time to beautify that project. I also wanted to say that <clears throat> I know that Sean and Sergio both played in that tournament, and I can't single any council member out, but I think one of them might have cheated to win the tournament, and I'm just saying that. Sergio's team won. <laughs> Sergio's team won the first annual Pioneer Days Rodeo Tournament. Forever be remembered. Whatever. Um, Forever. I also gave you all a couple other things. Uh, some of my scribbles and notes on a beautification project that um, I, along with Sergio, have been working on over the last couple of weeks. We hope to get this kicked off in the next two to three weeks. Um, I would like to do a beautification project at base off awards which means all five of y'all would have a ward along with an at-large where a son <coughs> along with you would find the beautiful place within your ward where you would go and set the sign and give the recognition to that citizen uh, along with cleaning up our town. You also say thank you for having the most beautiful yard. Again, uh, the Delphinium Club along with the Garden Club, we're hoping we'll partner with us on this to really highlight those yards that people really take advantage of and make look beautiful for the city of Gaiman. So other than that, I don't have anything that I know of. I don't have anything. Anyone else? Do you want to admit that you cheated? I, I just got a, like being a couple, nice. couple things is, is uh, I, I do want to thank city staff, uh, the golf course uh, group, um, Pete's guys, um, anyone else that was helping. Uh, one with with the golf tournament, um, everything with Pioneer Days. Um, the city looks awesome. You guys are doing a great job. Um, hope you keep up with the mowing because it's about to get crazy. <laughs> but you guys always do a good job. So I just want to say thank to city staff. Thank you to city staff. Um, not just you guys, but everyone in, as a whole that's been working long nights and tirelessly on, on getting things done in the city of Guymon. Um, so, so thank you to you guys and fire department and police department. You guys are included in that. So thank you. Um, I don't know if y'all heard today, the sirens went off again. <laughs> so, um, just to give you kind of an update, we did turn them on because we were going to have severe weather Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. So we had them turned on. We went, Monday morning, um, we were on the phone with the National Weather Service several times throughout the day to make sure what they were thinking. They told us there was a 2% chance of tornadoes at that point. We went and turned them all on. They told us Tuesday there was a 35% chance of tornadoes somewhere in the Oklahoma or Texas panhandle. And quote unquote from their words that it was something that storm chasers were going to be jealous of. So we felt it was important that we kept the sirens on. So we made it through all those days and I'm happy sitting at at lunch and I get about four phone calls simultaneously telling me that the sirens are going off so um, I don't think we were as, as much hacked anymore I think it skipped from another agency somewhere somehow um, bleed over something um, it doesn't change our course of action we will still have to update every siren and get them all um, reprogrammed uh, so George has uh, was on I've been on contacts with George with G&G he says that there's a part that's ordered from China that's not getting here on time. So um, that's where we're at. So if you get any complaints, they're all back off. Um, we'll continue to monitor the weather. If something happens, we'll turn them back on. So, Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any other reports? Uh, item 8, we'll stand adjourned. Thank you.